Keith, the genome is a big disappointment in terms of explaining why we are obese or not. Now, the programming of our genes, which is epigenetics, seems to be more important. Um, tell me, how are genes programmed? How does this work? Sure. Well, you're right that it's disappointing uh, in relation to genome and uh, obesity particularly. I mean, it's around two and a half, three percent that's currently known uh, variants explain in terms of obesity. And what seems to be more important is that during development, uh, exposures such as the mother's diet, uh, stress, uh, body composition can uh, alter the packaging of the DNA of the offspring, so-called epigenetics, and this includes a variety of uh, effects, one of which is so-called DNA methylation, where there is a chemical change to certain parts of the DNA with the addition of methyl groups to uh, cytosines where they sit, sit next to a guanosine. And these epigenetic influences seem to account for an order of magnitude uh, greater effects on uh, obesity risk. So we see 20, 25% or more uh, of childhood obesity explained by epigenetic marks uh, measured at birth uh, in some of our cohort studies. You're saying at birth, uh, but at birth means Nine, uh, nine months of uh, pregnancy and means a preconceptional phase. Um, what is your uh, uh, judgment from animal studies which we have and human studies which are already available? Which is the period which is very important? Let's stick to obesity for, for example, childhood obesity, obesity of the offspring. So the answer in humans is we don't know yet. In animals, the data are coming through, pointing to powerful effects that operate around the time of conception. And uh, that you would expect to be important because in early pregnancy, just after conception, there is a wiping of a lot of the epigenetic marks on uh, DNA, not all of them though, and uh, then there is an acquisition of methylation marks, particularly in the early days uh, of pregnancy. So we think that those may be critical, but we're only now doing the studies to really uh, show that or not. And is there any effect after birth? Sure. Nutrition, so, for example. Sure. So in animals, again, we know for certain that you can reverse some of the epigenetic marks during critical windows in the early days after birth. Um, nutrition seems to be one part of that. Hormones is another. And it may be that some of the nutritional effects are changing the levels of hormones like leptin, which uh, signal to the body uh, the nutritional state and uh, alter the epigenetic processes uh, through that. Uh, in humans, there's some data uh, suggestive of a lasting effect of nutrition in uh, infancy and beyond, but a lot more work needs to be done there. Beyond means adolescents, elderly? <laughs> yes, I mean, the theoretical basis for this is only really now being delineated, but it does appear that there are particular periods of plasticity um, around conception, pregnancy, infancy, but another period of plasticity during adolescence um, when the chromatin, the uh, DNA, is opened up in special and different ways and remodeling of the epigenetic processes uh, can uh, occur. So it's a brave new world in terms of identifying when these critical periods are for different parts of the process. And many years of research to go, I assume. Indeed so. Thank you very much. Thank you.